I got a big pile of wings and a lot of questions to answer. Let's do this thing. Hey Fruit Bass, it's Freely Banana Girl here. Welcome to another episode. So today's video is on Furious Pete. He's a fellow YouTuber who has become quite famous for smashing in junk food. I would call him like a competitive junk food eater. And that's what he does in his videos. As you can see here, he just smashes in junk food and his viewers love it and he, he loves it. It's fun and entertaining and all that stuff. But in reality, it is disgusting and it's destroying the lives of animals. It's destroying the planet and it's actually now destroying his health. So he recently made a video about having testicular cancer and he actually had one of his testes removed. And I'll just let him tell you a little bit more about it. Hey guys, Furious Pete here. And yesterday, I went through the scariest moment, most nervous moment of my life. Yesterday, I had surgery for testicular cancer. Honestly, I didn't really know how to feel when I watched this video because I was, my feelings were clashing. You know, I felt compassionate to his struggles and I felt sorry for him. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, you know, you didn't know that you were creating this disease in your body. And as a vegan, I was pissed off to say the least to see him consuming all that pain and suffering and basically destroying the planet around him. But I have to put those feelings aside and help this guy because he obviously does not know. Maybe some of you who say, oh, Freely, leave him alone. He doesn't need your help. Well, it's obvious that he does need my help. He didn't even make the connection in his video between what he's eating and his cancer. And he just, he basically said, oh, you know, we've cut it out and it's going to be okay. It turns out that we removed the, the left side and it turns out that there was no spread uh, yet from, from, uh, as a result of the CT scan, so which is good, which means that there's a really, really high chance that nothing else will be spread and, and that it'll be okay. So this is a problem with that kind of thinking. You know, that's a typical conventional approach to cancer is to burn it, cut it out, and it just does not work because it's only addressing a symptom of a cause. You know, you have to go to the root of the cause and, say, and find out why did this cancer manifest in my body? And it's 99% of the time it is to do with your diet. And the reality is, folks, he's not going to hear that from his doctors. He's not going to hear that he needs a drastic diet and lifestyle change or to try a plant-based diet. Likely the next step is the cancer comes back and then the doctors are like, oh, we need to rush you into chemotherapy and give you radiation. So obviously I need to act fast and get to him before that actually happens. So it's pretty obvious that Pete is into bodybuilding and I used to be in the bodybuilding circle myself and something that is commonly used is steroids and sometimes insulin growth factor one and they can both definitely contribute to testicular cancer and the growth of tumors. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. So I found some interesting research collected by one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Greger. Got testicular cancer? The dairy connection. Testicular cancer is the most rampant cancer among young men in North America. The rates of testicular cancer have been steadily climbing over the last 50 years. Yet, there's been little data on dietary risk factors for this dreaded disease. I wonder why. A study published last month in the International Journal of Cancer changed all that. Last month, October 2003, the biggest study on diet and testicular cancer ever conducted was published, studying the diet of hundreds of cancer victims. By far, the strongest, most significant dietary risk factor associated with the cancer was the consumption of cheese. Those men that are the most that ate the most cheese were almost 90% more likely to develop cancer of the testicles. 90% folks. The investigators guessed that it may be the hormones in milk and dairy that were to blame. The second second strongest dietary risk factor seemed to be the consumption of lunch meat. Wow. So this is a huge connection and Pete would be crazy to ignore this. So still in the dairy connection, here's some footage from Dr. Greger explaining why hormone sensitive cancers such as testicular cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer are actually fed by dairy and tumors grow in size. Concern has been expressed about the fact that cow's milk contains estrogens and could stimulate the growth of hormone sensitive tumors. Concern that the consumption of dairy products could both promote the conversion of precancerous lesions or mutated cells to invasive cancer, and enhance the progression 
of hormone-dependent tumors. They chose organic cow's milk because they wanted to exclude the effect of added hormones and just test the effect of all the growth and sex hormones found you know, naturally in all milk. They found that cow's milk stimulated the growth of human prostate cancer cells in each of 14 separate experiments, producing an average increase in cancer growth rate of over 30%. In contrast, almond milk suppressed the growth of these cancer cells by over 30%. IGF-1, a growth hormone called insulin-like growth factor number one. Levels go up when you're a kid, so you grow, and then come back down. Should your levels stay a bit too high as an adult, though, there's this constant message to our cells, you know, grow, 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 divide, don't die, keep going, keep growing. And so, not surprisingly, the more IGF-1 we have in our bloodstream, the higher our risk for cancer. More IGF-1, more prostate cancer. More IGF-1, more breast cancer. Of course, it's not the original tumor that tends to kill you, it's the metastases. IGF-1 is a growth factor. It helps things grow, so it helps cancer cells you know, break off from the main tumor, migrate into surrounding tissues, and invade the bloodstream. And, uh, you know, what do you think helps you know, breast cancer get into the bone? IGF-1. And the liver? IGF-1. Uh, lung, brain, you know, lymph nodes? IGF-1. Helps transform normal cells into cancer cells in the first place, then helps them survive, proliferate, self-renew, grow, migrate, invade, stabilize the new tumors, and even helps hook the blood supply up to the new tumor. IGF-1 is a growth hormone that makes things grow. That's what it does. But too much growth when we're all grown up can mean cancer. Wow, so that's some really compelling information. Really scary, in fact. And Pete, if you're still having meat and dairy, then you're essentially feeding your cancer. You're telling it to grow, grow, grow. Americans practically worship animal protein, yet it is the strongest carcinogen we will ever encounter in our lives. This is not something that has been recently discovered. It's something that has been ignored due to our obsession with eating meat. In the 1960s, researchers in India thought by increasing animal protein, it would help cure cancer. What they found was just the opposite. In 100% of the cases, increasing the consumption of animal protein caused cancer. Cancer was only triggered with animal protein. In further experiments, they found that regardless of how many carcinogens entered the body, the development of cancer was totally dependent on how much animal protein was consumed. In other words, the consumption of animal protein makes us more susceptible to cancer. This is one reason why populations such as the Okinawans and other groups who eat plant-based diets have much lower cancer rates. In effect, their plant-based diets form a green light around them, protecting them from cancer. So cancer cannot survive in an oxygenated, alkaline environment. So if you're still eating meat and dairy, you're providing the cancer with the ultimate environment, the ultimate acidic, low oxygen environment to thrive in. So what are the most alkaline foods on the planet? The foods that allow the body to oxygenate the cells properly? Fruits and vegetables, of course. So can you see what I'm getting at here, Pete? Try a high carb vegan lifestyle. This is your life on the line, essentially. So you gotta get serious about this. And trying this lifestyle is getting serious because a lot of people have reversed their cancer on a high carb vegan lifestyle. So Pete, please start respecting your health, respecting the animals, respecting the environment by giving up this nasty, destructive way of eating. So I hope this video helps not only Pete, but anyone else who is in a similar situation because the link between meat and dairy and cancer progression is just not talked about. And there's a reason for it, folks. There's a vested interest. There's a meat and dairy industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And on top of that, the pharmaceutical industry as well. So there's a lot of corruption going on. You need to open your eyes. You need to wake up to it and to make that connection to save your own life, essentially. So Fruit Bats, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to go fruit or root yourself. Pritikin's work has continued through his research foundation, 
which has really done some elegant work. They put people on different diets, drip their blood on cancer cells growing in a petri dish, and then just stand back and see whose blood is better at suppressing cancer growth. They were among the ones that uh, published that study showing the blood of those on a vegan diet was dramatically less hospitable to cancer. Even the blood of those on the standard American diet fights cancer. I mean, if it didn't, everyone would be dead. It's just that the blood of those eating vegan fights about eight times better. The blood of those on the standard American diet slows cancer growth down about 9%. Put people on a plant-based diet for a year, though, and their blood just tears it up. Uh, the blood circulating within the bodies of vegans has nearly eight times the stopping power when it comes to cancer cell growth. 